Good day. My name is Anissa Barton Thompson, and I'm the social media specialist for the College of Extended and International Education here at California State University, Dominguez Hills. Welcome. Feel free to download the Master of Science and Systems Engineering Information Kit for details about the program and additional resources covered in this webinar. The address is bit.ly slash CSUDH dash MSSE dash info kit. Or feel free to review our program information on our website at CSUDH.edu slash systems dash engineering dash MS. To get started, let's take a quick look at our session's agenda. We'll begin by meeting the curriculum developer, program coordinator, and lead faculty member, Dr. Tony Boadi, who will highlight systems engineering career opportunities and introduce you to the program via an overview of benefits, expectations, and course details. Then we'll go over the application process. And now to lead off our session, I'll turn us over to Dr. Tony. Dr. Tony, take it away. Thank you. Welcome to our presentation. I thank you so much for joining us. One of the questions that we're frequently asked is what is systems engineering? Because it is distinctly different from other engineering disciplines. Systems engineering provides the tools, the techniques, the methods, knowledge, standards, and concepts that enable the realization of successful systems. It spans the entire life cycle of a program or product from its inception to its retirement and ultimate disposal. So you can think of systems engineering as the glue that ensures that a product or system developed by diverse teams, companies, and agencies, that that system performs as intended. Well, as a systems engineer, you may be wondering, what exactly do systems engineers do? And to be frank, the systems engineer's duties vary depending upon the industry. What you see here is a title search that was performed at the NCOSI website. NCOSI is the premier systems engineering professional organization, and the acronym stands for the International Council of Systems Engineers. And so if you go to the job board, you'll see a number of position descriptions. And I encourage you to perform um, a title search at that website, and you may find it helpful to map the key competencies, skills identified in the job descriptions with the content covered in the systems engineering curriculum. Just to summarize, systems engineers transform program needs to fully implementable solutions. Our curriculum is designed to mimic the process of developing systems. Student teams collaborate to develop the system of their choice. They document the performance of the system in a requirement specification. In successive semesters, they continue the process of defining system interfaces, modeling the system, and performing system verification and validation. The curriculum is a 21-month accelerated program, which is completed in five consecutive semesters beginning fall, spring, the summer in between, and concluding with fall, spring of the next year. The program is cohort-based, so students progress through the curriculum with the same set of peers. This allows you to establish study groups, project teams, as well as domain-centric learning communities. Now, students must take courses according to this schedule. It cannot be altered. Our lectures are recorded so that you can review them at a time that is most convenient for you. In addition, every week students contribute to the course discussion board. All of our students are fully employed. And because our program is offered through special sessions, we have the flexibility of offering a staggered schedule. Here's an example of our staggered schedule for this upcoming fall. Notice that there are three courses. There are two core courses, which are three unit courses and a one unit research course. The first core course, which is the 540 course, it begins on August 30th. The other two courses begin two weeks later. And the benefit of that is that students are allowed to become familiar with the requirements of a core course before beginning the next two courses. Also, the end dates are staggered. 
we developed the schedule directly based upon student input. Um, our students commented that even though they're working full time and they're enrolled in three courses, they don't feel overwhelmed. Because all of our students are, are, are working full time and they have an online flexible schedule, this schedule, which consists of 12 week courses with four week overlap has been successful. Now this is a practitioner's program. And the way that we ensure that students graduate with a full set of competencies that will allow them to contribute to an enterprise immediately upon hiring or immediately upon receiving a promotion is that the courses are, are designed and set up in three categories. They're core courses, methodology courses, and research courses. So the core courses provide you with the main skills. Those are more theoretical. The methodology courses, are, they provide you with the skills that you need to execute your research project. So the combination of those provides you with the techniques, the strategies that you need to complete your thesis. And those are the research courses. There are five of those. Every semester, you enroll in a one unit course. And this is to ensure that you are able to complete your thesis within the 21, month, um, of 21 months of the program. So the, the first semester 501 course, you, you're essentially identifying a topic for your thesis, a general topic. Second semester, the 502 course, you're specifically nailing down the research questions that you plan to investigate. 503 course, you're, you're determining what the methodology is or the approach that you'll use to solve your, your problem or your research questions. 504 is when you develop a formal research proposal. And lastly, the last semester is when you enroll in a three unit master's thesis. Because this is a, a practitioner's program, we make sure that we, we introduce all of the content needed in your core and methodology courses to prepare you for successfully completing your thesis or your culminating project. Our curriculum has been designed for learners at every stage of their professional development, whether they're recent graduates, mid-career professionals, as well as seasoned professionals. Learners with less professional experience sometimes wonder whether they will be able to successfully complete a project. This year's project areas involved healthcare systems engineering. That was a very popular topic, largely because of um, the COVID-related issues that that um, applied to systems engineering. Some students were interested in the application of biometric technologies um, in terms of immigration and border protection. There are six or seven students who work in the defense industry and they're really interested in risk management. Um, we have a student who's also interested in healthcare, risk, fire service, and someone else in transportation. Um, students interested in logistics, um, autonomous vehicles, the implementation of digital engineering in, in the Department of Defense, as well as various topics related to the, the improvement and upgrade of our country's um, energy infrastructure. One thing that's important to know is that some students have adapted their work assignments to serve as thesis projects. We encourage this. These students plan to engage their colleagues and managers by inviting them to serve on their thesis committees with the ultimate goal of gaining visibility and demonstrating their preparation for promotion. You may ask, well, what are the exact steps to completing a thesis project? Well, we've developed a very detailed, structured approach to ensure that learners successfully complete their projects within the defined time constraints. An example of, of one such um, project has to do with the use of of drones in search and rescue applications. The students who were interested in this began to explore this topic during the first semester because at that time there had been an incident on the news where someone had gone camping and they'd gotten lost. And the problem with search and rescue operations when humans are involved is that human beings can't see at night, they're fatigued and there's some environments that are too dangerous. And so the other thing is that students wanted to not just use an individual dr drone, but they wanted to develop a system of drones that operated sort of like biological systems. You'll notice that insect populations, they work as 
teams or, or naturally as swarms or fleets. And so this can be accomplished by applying concepts from artificial intelligence to mimic the swarming behavior. As I mentioned, you see that with insects, fish, and birds. So coming up with that idea, they realized that they needed to understand how to model these fleets of drones. And they wanted the drones to be terrestrial, underwater, as well as aerial, so that they could perform search and rescue operations in a variety of scenarios. And they're mapping out, they've mapped out a plan to complete the research project as part of their research courses, the 501, 502, 503, and 504. So once they've done that, well, how does a student go from this project idea to actually executing a thesis? So in terms of the core courses, the, in the 510, 570, and 580 courses, the students will develop a concept of operations and begin to develop high-level system performance requirements. And they will specify particularly that the system would consist of autonomous aerial, terrestrial, and underwater drones. It's important to be able to model the performance of, of these um, different types of vehicles. In their modeling and simulation course, they will specify what the requirements are as well as the missions and, and activities that these different drones should be able to perform. They wanna emphasize that this is safer and that the drones don't fatigue and they need to identify the, the set of sensors that would need to be um, implemented in the system. So officially, how would a student go from this project idea, which is very interesting, to the actual practical development of a thesis? So the first thing that needs to happen is that they need to develop a systems architecture. And that's covered in the second semester, which is the 570 Complex Systems Architecture course. And as I mentioned, they have to perform mission planning, which is, again is part of the definition of the system. And then the last thing is they're going to have to define trade studies that would need to determine the optimal fleet size, the right mixture of aerial underwater vehicles, and that's covered in their 550 course. And then lastly, the remaining content would have to do with defining and testing drone missions. Now the missions have to do with the patterns that a drone would use to perform search and, and um, rescue missions. And in this instance, they would use the content covered in their 530 course, which is quantitative methods and used in conjunction with a simulation tool that we're borrowing from one of our sister projects. You know, now you might be interested, well, how would, again, how are the research courses structured to support a variety of, of topics? The first course is the 501 course, and that's, you, you enroll in that course the first semester. These are all one unit courses. And in that course, you want to narrow down your, your area of interest. So you identify the domain. Some students are already working in the, in the field and they may want to focus on military systems. Others are working in, in healthcare. Or some students may not have a job in the industry at all. And so they are looking to study a variety of case studies to find which one aligns most or best with their personal interests. The second semester, now that they've identified the domain, they need to identify the research questions that they want to pursue relative to that domain. Once they've identified that, they're ready for the third course in which they identify the methodology, meaning how are you going to research or investigate your research questions. Lastly, in the one unit course, that's the 504 course, it's when you develop your research proposal. That consists of the research plan, your, your schedule or your timeline, the, the, the product deliverables. You're gonna identify the committee members. The, you're gonna document all of this in a research proposal, which you'll submit to the committee. Now at this point, you will have developed 90% of your thesis proposal. Now you're ready to actually write the thesis. And as I said, you've done most of the work already. This is the 590 course. You've taken a series of four one unit courses and the 590 course is a three unit course. And that's this is the course in which you actually execute your research plan. You've already run most of your simulation work experiments. And so you, essentially you are summarizing these results. By the time you begin this course, you've done most of the work. 
Um, once you've summarized your results, you've generated a draft of your thesis, you send that to your committee members. In your committee may be a mixture of faculty as well as practitioners. They could be people that you work with. It could be your manager, someone in a leadership position at your company. We encourage that because that provides you with visibility. It shows that you're developing a new set of skills and thus are eligible for promotion or more responsibility. So once you receive feedback, you've updated your document to reflect the feedback that you've gotten from your committee members, and then you defend the thesis, which simply means that you're, you're presenting your results. And you have to remember this is not intimidating because you are the number one expert in this field. Now, the step that I don't mention on this slide is step five, which involves having a rock of celebration, buying presents for your faculty. We're just kidding. But again, you should celebration is definitely an important part of this process. You've earned it. You've sacrificed for 21 months and you are ready to reap the rewards of the sacrifice. Now you may ask again, how will the students and professionals benefit from this particular program? Well, first of all, our program is designed to prepare you fast track careers in systems engineering. Within these 21 or 22 months, you'll learn the practical professional secrets involved with, with performing and supporting real systems engineering projects. The courses were developed in conjunction with industry leaders to ensure that our students have developed the professional competencies required could, to contribute to the enterprise immediately. Okay, here is a sample job requisition. And what I've done is mapped the core responsibilities to the different courses in our program. And so the, you notice that the first duty is that the person be, be responsible for translating customer needs into engineering requirements. And these particular skills are developed in two of our courses, the 510 and the 570 course. Um, the second competency is that the professional be able to create high level systems and subsystems design architecture documents. And those skills are also covered in the 510 and 570 courses. The third bullet talks about ensuring that the system designs meet the requirements with modeling and simulation as appropriate. And we have three courses that cover modeling and simulation and those are our 550, 580 and 585 courses. The fourth bullet talks about characterizing and documenting the performance of systems um, using statistical analysis, design of experiments, as well as statistical process control. And that's covered in our 530, which is our quantitative methods course. Lastly, that person is to develop into a domain specialist using a combination of skills. And this is covered in um, across all of our research or project courses, which is the 501, 502, 503, 504, as well as our core courses, 530, 550, 560, and 590. And the main thing that a systems engineer should be able to do is that they're responsible for translating the needs of stakeholders with varying technical backgrounds into fully functional systems. Systems engineering methodologies and tools, they span the entire life cycle of a system from its inception, again, to its retirement and ultimate disposal. Now, here's another job requisition. And this position encompasses the skills that are presented in our 560 course, because what we've heard from our workforce partners is these are the skills most in demand. Some of the older systems engineering curriculums are based on operations research, but the latest in the, um, the ascendant paradigm is model-based systems engineering. And so those competencies have to do with integrating architecture and design um, into an MBSE system, having knowledge of SysML, being able to work closely with professionals from engineering, logistics, financial, and program management, developing and maintaining documentation of the system, moving from a document-centric system to an, um, an electronic repository. So this is again, another example that the job responsibilities correspond directly to the program learning objectives of our 560 course, our model-based systems engineering course. Our curriculum was designed as a practitioner's degree program. 
This means that the assignments mimic industry conditions. Instead of offering midterm and final exams, which require students to memorize theoretical concepts and then they pretty much regurgitate them, students complete team-based engineering design challenges that are based upon real world budget, schedule, and technical constraints. The course deliverables or artifacts are based upon actual templates that are used in industry. When students write specifications, they are based on industry standards. And lastly, the program offers students the opportunity to complete three professional certifications. So in addition to the skills and knowledge developed as part of the coursework, students have the option to become certified and further enhance their professional portfolios. In COSI, which is the International Council of Systems Engineering, offers three levels of certification. The associate, which is the, the first and the entry level, the certified as well as the expert. Our curriculum is being map to the associate level certification, which means that our graduates would not have to sit for the ASAP exam. Because we are a member of NCOSI's Academic Council, we're working with them to map their professional competencies directly into our curriculum. In addition to the systems engineering certification, our students have the option of completing engineering management certifications. The Lean Six Sigma organizational certifications allow students to become certified at a variety of levels. Students have the option to pursue the Six Sigma program management certifications. There are four levels of certifications. Our students have the option of completing the green belt and the black belt. Some students may opt to, to complete only one. These certifications can be used to fulfill their research methodology requirement. So as a result, some students are using their thesis projects to fulfill the project requirement as part of the certification. This excellent combination of classroom and practical skills is surprisingly inexpensive, especially in comparison to similar systems engineering programs. Our 34-unit master's program costs approximately $19,000. This includes the tuition as well as textbooks. The, the cost of tuition is $495 per unit, which, is, which comes to just under $1,500 per three unit course. Textbooks cost approximately $300 per semester. And then there are some associated fees. This cost is very low in comparison to other programs in the area. The admission requirements for our MSSE degree program are as followed. The applicant should have completed a STEM-focused bachelor's degree from a fully accredited institution. They should be in good standing at the last institution attended. They should have a grade point average of at least 2.5 within the past 60 semester or 90 quarter units. And depending on the type of undergraduate degree held, the applicant can be admitted as either a classified or conditionally admitted student. What that means, if a student does not have a traditional engineering or STEM degree, they may have taken supplementary coursework, they may have developed certain skills as a professional, and they may still be eligible for admission to the program. Applications are only accepted for the fall term. When you're ready to apply, visit the Cal State Apply website at www dot calstate.edu slash apply. If you need assistance, we have provided additional resources in the MSSE information kit, which includes a step-by-step -step application guide. You should select the term that you're applying to, create an account, and pay the $70 application fee. Thank you for your interest in the program, and I hope to work with you soon. Thank you so much, Dr. Tony, for all of the invaluable information that you've provided during this session. Um, at this point, we've covered a great deal of information regarding the programs. But just in case we missed anything, we'd love for you to be able to get in touch with Dr. Tony directly. She can be reached at drtony at csudh.edu or via the general program information email, which is msse at csudh.edu. And you're welcome to also visit the website at csudh.edu 
slash systems dash engineering dash MS. This concludes our MS and systems engineering program information session. And we want to thank you for joining us today. We'd love to get your feedback on today's session. Please let us know how we can improve the quality of the information provided by visiting bit.ly slash CSU DH dash webinar dash feedback. Once again, we thank you for joining us. Please stay safe and we look forward to working with you.